As much as it pains me to say it, winter temperatures are now here. Lots of places are seeing snow. So in today's video, we are going to specifically talk about battery conditioning for the 2025 and newer Ionic 5, as well as the 2026 Ionic 9. So if you're new to EVs and you don't know what it is, battery conditioning basically is when you are utilizing some of the car's energy to heat up the battery pack in order to fast charge at optimal speeds. This is just due to chemistry. The battery is not able to take in as much power when it's colder, it has to be warmer. Like us humans, batteries do like to be at around 70, 75 degrees Fahrenheit or around 21 to 24 degrees Celsius, but it does go both ways. If the battery is too hot from driving in extreme heat or you just did a lot of DC fast charging, it will take some time to cool back down. So why would you want to battery condition? Well, I kind of touched on that. The battery wants to be between about 70 and 75 degrees to take in full charging power from a high powered DC fast charger. If your battery's temperature is outside of that window, you will not be able to charge in the advertised 20 minutes for Ionic 5 or 24 minutes, 10 to 80% with the Ionic 9. If you look at any of Hyundai's marketing paperwork, there's always a little asterisk that says in optimal conditions. And basically that's what they're alluding to. And if you wanna know how painful it can be, talk to any 2022 rear wheel drive Ionic 5 owner who has a car that does not even have battery heating from the factory. It's impossible to heat the battery up. And I was just talking with somebody the other day. He said from 10 to 80%, it can take him over an hour when it's cold outside. Now he lives in Florida, so most of the time it's not an issue, but if he goes north in the winter, he's just gonna have to sit and wait. One of the biggest selling points for the Ionic and Kia EV brands is that they charge so fast. So if you're like me, then you're probably gonna say, yeah, it's worth the little bit of extra effort and the little bit of extra cost to actually condition your battery. So how do you activate battery conditioning? Well, it's a lot easier today for the newer Ionic 5, Ionic 9, EV6, and EV9 than it has historically been for 2024 and earlier Ionic 5 and EV6, as well as Ionic 6. And that is because those cars use a older version of the software called Gen 5W. All of these newer cars are coming with CCNC or Connected Car Navigation Cockpit. And this system allows for much easier execution of battery conditioning. So the first and easiest way to activate battery conditioning is going to be by just manually pressing the activate button in the EV settings screen. So when in that screen, there's a little settings wheel. It is the rightmost button, I guess leftmost if you're in a European country that drives on the other side of the road. But you press that little button and then there will be another button in the center of the screen that just says activate. And it will also give you an indication of what the battery temperature currently is. So it'll either say low, optimal, or high. That's all you're gonna get. They're not gonna give you a actual battery temperature readout, which I think is a big miss. I would really love to see Hyundai just tell the temperature, say what it's currently at and what it needs to be at in order for high power charging. So if you're somebody who likes having manual control of your car, this is gonna be the option you want. But you do have to pay much closer attention to when you activate it to know that it's actually going to get the car's battery warm before you arrive at your destination charger. Now from your EV home screen, you can actually add a shortcut here. So if you weren't familiar with this, you can hold down on any of these tiles and then over here on the left, you can drag through and find a bunch of different widgets, I guess we'll call them. And you can see right here, there's one for battery conditioning. So we can hold that and then drag it into place, hit the back button. And now we have an easy way to activate battery conditioning right from the EV home screen. Pretty cool. The second way to activate it is going to be through the My Hyundai app on your smartphone. So all you're gonna do, open My Hyundai, press the charge icon, scroll down a little bit, you'll see battery preconditioning. They kind of use those words interchangeably. And right here you will see battery preconditioning is off. Unfortunately, it doesn't give you a battery temperature readout here, but you can remotely activate it from your phone. You don't have to go be in the car. So I think the best use case for this is if you're somebody who relies on DC fast charging um, versus charging at home. 
So say you're sitting in your apartment, you know you got a charge, you can just go in, press that button, and then you can zip over to the local DC fast charger. The one caveat with this method though is that it only runs battery conditioning for 30 minutes. So if your car's battery is really cold, it's gonna take significantly longer than 30 minutes. So you have to remember that after 30 minutes to go back in and activate battery conditioning again. So for all you apartment dwellers, this is a very nice feature and I'm glad Hyundai added it. Now the third and final method for activating battery conditioning is going to be by using the built-in route planning in your car's navigation system. And this is going to be the most hands-off method. Um, you have to give up some control to the car, so you are going to give it your final destination, the car is going to plan a route for you, and then it's going to add charging stops along the way. Um, I'm gonna have a video in the near future about the new navigation system updates, so stay tuned for that, but it's going to plan your charging stops, it's gonna tell you what state of charge you're going to hopefully arrive at, and it's going to charge you what percentage to charge the battery to to get to your next destination. Now along with that, it's also automatically going to activate battery conditioning based on historical data in its own logic, how long it's gonna take to get to that ideal temperature, and then it's going to start that while you are on your route. This is a really nice feature if you're somebody who just wants hands off, doesn't wanna to have to think about anything. So those are your three options for initiating battery conditioning. So there's one big thing that you need to know going into this winter season. That is battery conditioning only works if the battery state of charge is at around nine or 10%. Once that battery percentage ticks below nine or 10%, the car says, okay, we're going to prioritize range over battery temperature. And I think that number makes sense. So if you are manually activating battery conditioning, you have to take this into account. If you're relying on the car's route planning to do it, you can just allow it to figure it out. It will move your charging stop if it's battery conditioning and it's using power and it doesn't think you're gonna make it to the originally planned charging stop, it will adjust on the fly. The built-in route planner is actually pretty good at constantly updating. A very big improvement with CCNC versus Gen 5W is that you can now talk to the car's computer and say, hey, navigate to Electrify America in Saugus, Massachusetts, and it will then proceed to activate battery conditioning. If you did this with Gen 5W, it would not do it. So this is a huge improvement. I'm not sure if this came with CCNC or if this is based on the latest software update, which still hasn't rolled out over the air to everybody yet, but if you've manually installed it on your car, you should have it. But I'll show you an example of that right now. Navigate to Electrify America, Walmart 3114 in Saugus, Massachusetts. Oh, wow. It actually worked. Navigate to EVGO in Saugus, Massachusetts. And it pulled up a few of the options. So I think this is the one we want. Holy cow, it's actually working. Wow. Good job, Hyundai. Something to keep in mind though, is that if you are relying on the built-in route planning, you cannot use Google Maps, Waze, or Apple Maps in Android Auto or Apple CarPlay, or it will disable the car's native route planning system, and then nothing will happen. So you have to pick one or the other. For me personally, I have had pretty good experience using the built-in navigation system. Now that it has Google search built in, you can basically find any destination, you can call businesses, you can find their hours and everything. It's actually pretty good now. So if you're one of those people who wants manual control over this, you might be saying, okay, how long is it gonna take to battery condition? Well, luckily for you, I have a ton of data on this. So this data has been collected over a bunch of different cars, Ionic 5, Ionic 6, and EV9. Um, I don't have any Ionic 9 data because I haven't had that car in super cold temperatures yet. Now I'll preface this by saying, all this data was collected with stationary vehicles. If you are driving on the highway, I'm not really sure how these numbers will be affected because you also have some power coming out of the battery, which is going to warm it a little bit, but you also have cold air flowing under the battery. So that is also cooling it at the same time. So there's just these two things that are fighting each other. I don't know with 100% certainty how that would affect this data. So take that with a grain of salt. So this first data point, sub-freezing, 21 degrees Fahrenheit was a test I did during one of those polar vortexes with my Ionic 5. 
And I kind of had to extrapolate this data a little bit because I had issues with battery conditioning shutting down prematurely. Um, so I can't say with 100% certainty what the total time is, but I'm gonna say at least 60 minutes or an hour to get from 21 to 70 degrees Fahrenheit. So 32 degrees or zero degrees Celsius, basically at freezing, 47 minutes to 70 degrees. From 41 degrees Fahrenheit, 37 minutes, and from 54 degrees, 27 minutes. So if you're at or above freezing, you wanna give yourself at least 45, 50 minutes before you get to your charger for the battery to warm up. And even if it's relatively warm out in the 50s, you still need about a half an hour. So it does take some time. And the main reason for that is the first few minutes that battery conditioning is activated, it's not really doing a whole lot. The heating system is warming up. So for the first 10 minutes or so, you can see pack temperature does not come up all that much, maybe one to three degrees Fahrenheit. Um, so it takes some time. So with that information, if you're less than 10, 15 minutes away from your charger, Activating it, yeah, will help you a little bit, but it's really not gonna help you that much. So it does take a while to battery condition in really cold temperatures, but the good news about it is that once you do that first battery conditioning cycle and get the battery up to 70 degrees, and then you pump in a lot of extra heat from the DC fast charging process, that'll bring the battery pack up to about 120, 125 degrees Fahrenheit. And then when you get on the road, and you're an hour and a half, two hours away from your next charging stop, the battery doesn't need a whole lot more conditioning between battery charging stops. So the time needed to warm the battery pack is going to decrease significantly. But because Hyundai doesn't give you an actual battery temperature readout, you're kind of in the dark. It's just gonna say battery temp low. So you don't really know when to reactivate it if you are doing it manually. But if there's any caveat, you can just keep activating it as many times as you need to. The battery will cool back off and it'll say low again. So you could do that. But there is a much better way to actually know what your battery temperature is, and that is through an OBD2 Bluetooth dongle that plugs into the OBD2 port on the car. I've got a video about this process if you want to do it yourself. I'll put a link in the description below. Um, these are cheap, 25 bucks on Amazon. And if you're using CarPlay or Android Auto, there is now a car scanner app, which is the app that talks to the wireless OBD2 scanner and this will display all sorts of car data on the CarPlay screen or Android Auto screen. Um, super useful. You can really watch that battery temperature and see how quickly it's dropping, how quickly it's coming up. I just like to have this kind of information when I'm road tripping, and I know a lot of other people do too. Having a little bit of extra knowledge doesn't hurt. So you might be wondering, how much energy is being used for battery conditioning? Is it worthwhile? Is it gonna cost me? The answer is yes, it is going to cost you. So battery conditioning overall draws about six kilowatts of power from the battery. So let's take that 32 degree point where we start battery conditioning. If it runs for 47 minutes, drawing six kilowatts, that is going to equal 4.7 kilowatt hours. Now, on a road trip, you're probably gonna see an average charging price of about 50 cents per kilowatt hour. So to recoup that energy that would otherwise be used for pushing the car forward down the road, it would be about $2.35 worth of energy. And on the low end, if you're doing it at about 54 degrees Fahrenheit, 2.7 kilowatt hours or $1.35. So you are going to pay for using this feature, but it is also going to save you a ton of time. So if your time is valuable, then battery condition all you want. So for me personally, $2.35 is worth saving 20 minutes of time. But for you, it might not be. Now, because I haven't had access to an Ionic 9 in cold temperatures, I haven't been able to test this, but Hyundai was saying that the Ionic 9 features some new battery heating technology that should be more efficient or quicker, but I am gonna be spending some more time with an Ionic 9 in the next few weeks, and I'll hopefully be able to do that test. Pro tip, if you do need more power to be put into battery heating or cooling, turn off the cabin air conditioning for a few minutes and just let it do its thing. The car is able to allocate more power to warming or cooling the battery pack, thus leading to a quicker time to optimal temperature. Now, some of you down in the comment section are probably screaming, what if I yo-yo the car? Which means speeding up, slowing down really aggressively. The theory behind this is that it's going to draw a ton of power, put a ton of power back into the battery repeatedly, thus warming the battery pack up. 
This was a thing back when EVs were low voltage and high current. High current is going to create a bunch of heat. Now with high voltage cars like Ionic 9, Ionic 5, Ionic 6, they are high voltage, lower current, but with the same power output. And what that means is that not as much heat is being generated in that process of pulling energy out and putting it back into the battery pack. A few years ago, I tested this theory at freezing temperatures and it basically did zilch. And even if it did work, if you had passengers in your car, they would wanna be wringing your neck. But if you wanna have fun by yourself, go ahead, slam that accelerator and slam the brake all you want. So I think that is about everything I wanted to talk to in regard to battery conditioning. So if you guys liked this video, give it a thumbs up, please. Hit that subscribe button, a lot of you aren't subscribed to the channel who watch these videos it really helps me out if you want some cool accessories for your ionic or kia ev check out my store at ionicguy.com there's all sorts of good stuff there something for everybody i've got some christmas tree ornaments that look like the wheels on your ionic 5 but be sure to check those out if you want to add some flair to your christmas tree consider becoming a channel member for as little as 99 cents per month for three dollars per month you can gain early access to all of my videos as well as a 10 percent discount to my store and as always, I'll see you guys in the next one. Take care, everybody.